On this episode, I make the bronze cylinders and mounting arms for the traction engagement system. Welcome to the Fell Engine Project, where I'm building a three and a half inch gauge live steam locomotive to my own drawings. First up, we're going to tackle the cylinders. So let's head over to the mill. I'm machining these from a piece of bronze bar using a 14mm roughing end mill. I cut away some of the waste material using a hacksaw before heading back to the mill to continue machining. I then square and finish the cut side. Next up we'll rotate the part 90 degrees and hold the part using the two machined faces. The remaining two sides can then be roughed out. The ends of the block can then be squared using a standard 12mm end mill. With the block complete, the cylinder now needs to be bored. To do this, the block is rotated on its end and located accurately using an edge finder and the digital readout. The cylinder is then drilled and reamed, starting with a spotting drill, followed by an undersized drill, and then finally the reamer. Once it's complete, a quick check with the piston and then it's out of the vise. Next we're going to machine some slots for the keys. The keys are 3mm by 3mm, so we're using a 3mm end mill. This face is 1.5mm thick through to the bore. So when we locate the key later, the key will protrude 1.5mm into the bore. Next I'm going to cut the outer curve using the rotary table. The digital readout's been zeroed on the centre of the rotary table, and now I'm centering the part. This will ensure the cut is concentric with the ball. For this procedure, the X axis is locked and the Y axis is set for the radius. When one half is complete, I flip it over and repeat on the other side. We're currently actually making two parts at the same time, and I'll split these with a hacksaw shortly. Once the part's cut, it's back to the mill for a quick clean up before being drilled and tapped for mounting.
And that's the cylinder complete. The next part we need is a shaft support bracket. Well actually two. So I've cut out a couple of pieces of 3mm mild steel plate. And I take them together with the TIG welder so we can machine them as a pair. This will ensure they match and speed up machining. Next up, a row of 2.5mm holes to match the frame. Once again starting with a spotting drill. All of those out of the way, next up we need some large 17mm holes. These will form the shape of the plate. I use a 10mm end mill cut the remaining shape of the plate. Once that's complete, it's over the bench for final finishing, starting with removing the remaining excess material using a hacksaw, followed by some hand filing. Filing complete, I deburr the holes, then it's time to make some brass bushings on the lathe. I start with some 10mm brass round bar, which I'm holding in the AR32 collet chuck. Once the rods had a skim cut, I check the diameter using the digital calipers and then set the accurate diameter on the digital readout. Once all the features are cut, ready to part off. It can then be pressed into the hole on the bracket using the vise. Right, now we're ready for some assembly. Starting with the cylinders and pistons, hitting the keys. We're jacked as an anti-rotation device. The cylinders can then be attached to the sub-assembly. Now we can give the subassembly a quick check, and everything seems to be working. The subassembly can then be added to the frame. Once that's complete, I move on to the shaft support brackets and the shafts and gears. 
these support brackets will soon become integral parts of the frame, as soon the centre section of the frame will be cut away to allow a removal of the traction axles without full disassembly of the frame. With everything fixed in place, it's time to give the mechanism a go. And there's great news, it actually works. I was really worried with this one, but it might not actually work. When the external gears turned, the pistons now extend and retract. And I've added one of the leaf springs here, so you can see how it fits. There's a whole stack of springs to go in here for final assembly. Then we'll need to add this worm gear, which will allow this to be engaged from the cab. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and share. Catch you next time!